morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're glad to have each and every one of you on this beautiful Sunday morning as we gather together to worship the Lord. As we gather together to lift up the name of Jesus Christ, that name that's above all names. We gather this morning as God's wonderful people to worship, to fellowship one with another, to pray for one another, to lift up one another, to make a difference in one another's lives. We gather this morning as God's wonderful people. Let us turn to hymn number 707 as we sing together the hymn of promise. morning. We're glad to have you all this morning. In our scripture this morning, Nicodemus, who was a Jew and probably was one of the richest men in Jerusalem, they say he was the third richest man in Jerusalem at that time. But he came to Jesus by night and he said, I know that thou art from God because you could not do the miracles that you do unless you were from God. And Jesus startled him when Jesus said to Nicodemus, ye must be born again. For if you are not born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. You must be born of the water, and you must be born of the Spirit. And so this morning, every one of us here is born of the water when we are brought forth into this world by our mother. We are born of the Spirit when we give our lives to Jesus Christ, and we ask the Lord to come into our hearts. And so this morning... For Jesus to tell Nicodemus he could not see the kingdom of God unless he was born again. We too must be born again. We must be born of the Spirit. We must be born from above. We must accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and allow him to come and live and dwell in each and every one of our hearts if we are to see the kingdom of God and if we are to be a part of the kingdom of God and if we are to spend eternity with Jesus Christ. And so this morning, let us turn our hearts to him and let him have his way with us. Let us pray. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, and his love for each and every one of us as he gave himself on Calvary's cross that our sins might be forgiven, that we might have life and have it abundant and have the assurance of eternal life. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you continue to do for each and every one. Heavenly Father, may your spirit live and dwell in each and every one of our hearts that we might live with thee forever. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, as we go to the Lord in prayer, we want to continue to remember those that are sick and those that are shut in. We're glad to have Miss Peggy back with us. She's had a time with the sciatic nerve, and we just ask the Lord to continue to touch her and continue to heal her and continue to be with her. And we continue to lift up Miss Frances, and uh, we ask the Lord to continue to be with her and continue to give Brenda and the family the strength they need as they take care of her. And we just ask the Lord to continue to be with them in a mighty way. Remember those in the nursing home and those that are shut in at home, we ask the Lord just to continue to touch each and every one and be with them in a mighty way. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before your throne of grace this morning, Heavenly Father, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for your love towards each and every one of your precious children. We thank you for your concern for each and every one of us. Heavenly Father, we ask that you just continue to walk with us, continue to watch over us, continue to bless us mightily. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love towards each and every one of us as you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, into the world to die for each and every one of us, to shed his blood that our sins might be atoned for that we might have that life, that we might have it so abundantly, and that we might have that assurance of eternal life. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the hope that Jesus Christ gives to each and every one of us this day. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for your precious Holy Spirit that knocks on our heart's door that moves within each and every one of us to draw us closer to you and closer to one another. And Heavenly Father, we ask that your spirit might move within each and every one of us this day. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those that are sick, those that are shut in, those that are bereaved. Lord, you know, each and every one of them. Lord, all of those that are suffering with, with the virus, Lord, we just ask that you might touch every family and Heavenly Father, be with them in a mighty way. And Heavenly Father, we ask that you might be with each and every one of us this day. Heavenly Father, we thank you for each and every one of these precious lives that have gathered with us today. And Heavenly Father, you, you know everything about us. Lord, you know what we're going through today. And Lord, we just ask that you might be with each and every one of us. Lord, that you might touch us in a mighty way, that you might encircle us with your loving arms and let us know that we're not alone that we have someone that will be with us and will stay with us and will hold close to us. Heavenly Father, continue to watch over each and every one of your precious children. And Heavenly Father, we ask that your Holy Spirit might go with us throughout this service 
that everything we say and everything we do will bring glory and honor to your holy name. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for the prayer that Jesus prayed on many occasions, taught his disciples to pray. And we pray this morning as your children, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hymn number 362, Nothing But the Blood. A Psalter reading is found on page 738. We're reading from Psalm 1. Blessed are those who do not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord. They are like trees planted by streams of water that yields their fruit in season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, Thank you. 
By way of announcements, let's remember that we will have a fifth Sunday luncheon uh, this month, and so let's keep that in mind as we fellowship together, as we continue to gather around the table. And so we're looking forward to our time together the fifth Sunday of the month. And also remember the second Saturday in May, the Daughters Bruncheon. Put that on your calendar and Let's make sure that we make every effort to come and enjoy the fellowship and time together. So keep that in mind as we worship together. If there's no other announcement, may we worship the Lord with our tithes and offerings. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for these gifts and those that are given them. Heavenly Father, receive these gifts that they might be used for the uplifting of your kingdom as we make a difference in the world around about us. In Jesus' name, amen.
Gospel of John, the third chapter, beginning with verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou dost, except God be with him. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born of water, and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I have said unto thee, ye must be born again. For the wind bloweth where it lists, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell what it cometh. And where it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knoweth not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know and testify that we have seen and ye receive not our witness. If I told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you heavenly things? And no man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for this scripture and for the message that you have given unto me this day as I break the bread of life unto your wonderful people. Heavenly Father, may every word that flow from my lips be pleasing unto you. And Heavenly Father, these your precious children who have come today to hear the bread of life. Heavenly Father, may their hearts and meditation thereof be pleasing unto you. And Heavenly Father, we ask for your anointing today that you would anoint every word that is spoken and every word that is received. Heavenly Father, we ask it in that precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Our subject today is, Ye must be born from above. Jesus said, Ye must be born again. If you are not born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. You must be born of the Spirit. The Reverend Michael Powell tells a story when he was serving a little Methodist church out in Idaho. The church was not far from a little landing strip where the small planes came in and that's where they 
had the Easter sunrise service. They would invite the community and they would have the Easter sunrise service there on that little strip. But it was also the place where Mike would walk his dog every morning. He'd walk his dog from one end to the other. And there was a little mentally handicapped girl that lived right there by the airstrip. And she would come out and she would walk with him every day. Now, the Little Methodist Church in Idaho is like a lot of Little Methodist churches here. We don't have Sunday night services. So he would go over to the Pentecostal church. And it was there that he learned the lily of the valley. He is the lily of the valley. He's the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. And it got to the point where that became his song. Uh, that He would sing every morning when he walked his dog and the little girl would walk with him. But she never said anything the whole time that they were walking. Every day when they walked, she would never say anything. He would sing along the way and she would just walk with him. Then one day, he had a bad day and nothing seemed to be going right. And he really didn't want to walk the dog, but he knew that the dog needed to be walked. So he went ahead and, and started walking with the dog, but he wasn't singing that morning because he just wasn't up to it. Every one of us have those kinds of days when we just don't want to do anything. We just seem to be down. And that was one of those days for him. And so he was walking with the dog and, and he walked about halfway down the, the airstrip and all of a sudden he heard a little sound next to him. He is the bright and morning star. He heard the little girl mumbling, he is the bright and morning star. He is the bright and morning star. Reverend Mike Powell knew that the little girl wanted him to sing, he's the lily of the valley. And so he started singing, he's the lily of the valley, he's the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. And he said by the time he got back to the other end, his life and mourning had completely changed because he knew that God had spoken to him through a little mentally handicapped girl. This morning... Brian Haney sings the song, I have found my lily in the valley. And folks, when we find our lily in the valley, he is the bright and morning star. He is the fairest of 10,000 to our soul. And so this morning, we see in our scripture that God spoke to Nicodemus through Jesus, just like God has spoken to Reverend Powell through that little mentally handicapped girl. And Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. And we don't know why he came by night. We just know that he sat on the Sanhedrin court he was probably the third richest man in Jerusalem at the time. He knew all about the feast days and all about the ceremonial days. And he came to Jesus and he said, we know that you come from God because you cannot do the miracles that you do unless you come from God. 
Now, Nicodemus was expecting probably Jesus to say something else. But Jesus startled him when he said, Nicodemus, ye must be born again. You cannot see the kingdom of God unless you're born again. Nicodemus said, but how can I be born again when I'm old? How can I enter into my mother's womb and be born again? And Jesus said, ye must be born of the water and of the Spirit. If you're not born of the water and the Spirit, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What Jesus was saying to Nicodemus is that each and every one of us is born of the water. We are born of the water at birth when the mother's water sack breaks and we come forth. We are brought into the world as an earthly being, as a human being. Every one of us is born of the water. It has nothing to do with being baptized. Jesus said that we're born of the water. But we also must be born of the Spirit. Because if we're not born of the Spirit, we cannot see the kingdom of God. We cannot participate in the kingdom of God unless we're born of the Spirit. For he said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. In other words, when we are born of the water, we are born of the flesh. But that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Verily I say unto you, ye must be born again. You must be born of the Spirit. And Jesus says to Nicodemus, you know all about the ceremonial law. You know about the sacrificial law. You know about all of the feast days. But you don't know about the heavenly things. And if you only know about the earthly things and don't know about the heavenly things, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus, ye must be born again. And then he tells Nicodemus how that is possible. For it says, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of God be lifted up. Nicodemus, you will see the day when the Son of God is lifted up on the cross. You will see the day when the covenant of grace comes to replace the covenant of the law. Nicodemus, you will see the day when the shed blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse you from all your sin. We don't know whether or not Nicodemus ever came to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, but I believe that Nicodemus accepted the Spirit of God. Because you see, the Spirit moves. And the, Jesus said it's like the wind that blows. The wind blows, and you don't know which way it blows, and you don't know how it blows and which way it blows. But the, the wind blows, just like it did last Friday. The wind blew. It blew two pieces of the 
the metal off of my dormers and it blew one piece all the way across the house and back into the backyard. We don't know how the wind blows, but it moves. And so does the Spirit of God move in the same way. We don't know how the Spirit moves, but the Spirit moves and it touches our hearts. And as that Spirit touches our hearts, we become a new creature in Christ Jesus. The old things pass away and the whole things become brand new. And I believe that's what happened to Nicodemus. I believe that the Spirit of God moved and touched his heart and he was made whole. This morning, as God spoke to Mike Powell through a little handicapped, mentally handicapped girl, and God spoke to Nicodemus through Jesus, I believe God is speaking to us this morning through the Scriptures. For Jesus said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He sent his Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but through him the world might be saved. Whoever believeth in Jesus is not condemned. But whosoever believeth not in Jesus is condemned already because he does not believe in the Son of God. This morning I believe that the Scriptures are speaking to us. That just as Nicodemus needed to be born of the water and of the Spirit, Every one of us need to be born of the water and the Spirit. Every one of us here this morning is born of the water. When we came forth, we were born of the water. But what about being born of the Spirit? Has the Spirit of God moved upon each and every one of us? Has the Spirit of God touched our hearts and changed us? to make us a new person, that the Holy Spirit might live and dwell in us. The Scripture said that as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of God be lifted up. He was lifted up on the cross at Calvary as that perfect sacrifice for each and every one of us. It was there that his blood atoned for every one of our sins. It was there that it was his blood that paid the sin debt for each and every one of us. It was there on Calvary's cross that he gave us all the benefits that we need to live a victorious life. It's right there in the scriptures telling us that we must be Born again. We must be born from above. The Spirit of God must come and dwell in our hearts in order for us to experience the kingdom of God, for us to experience eternal life. This morning I'm going to do something that I've never done before until this morning at Shiloh. I'm going to do the sinner's prayer. And I'm going to ask you to repeat after me. And I'm going to ask everyone so that I don't want anyone to be embarrassed. So I'm just going to ask all of you to repeat the sinner's prayer behind me. It's not the words that will save you, but it's your belief in those words that will save you. Heavenly Father, I have sinned and I'm a sinner. 
Heavenly Father, I'm sorry for my sins. Heavenly Father, I ask that you come into my life. Heavenly Father, I'm sorry for my sin. And Heavenly Father, I ask that you forgive me of my sin. Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And Heavenly Father, I believe that He rose on the third day. And Heavenly Father, that He lives and He lives. Heavenly Father, wash me, cleanse me, make me whole. Heavenly Father, I am saved. This morning, if you believe those words, then you can know that you have been born of the Spirit, that you can have eternal life, and that you will spend eternity with Jesus Christ. Our closing hymn is 370, Victory in Jesus, the first and last verse as we sing together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence with us today. We thank you for what your son Jesus Christ did for us on Calvary's cross. 
And Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Spirit that moves within each and every one of us to draw us closer to you that we might walk with you day by day. Heavenly Father, may your Spirit continue to touch each and every one of these precious lives as the Spirit moves within each and every one of us. And Heavenly Father, we give you the praise and the glory. We ask it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.